Welcome to another episode of the Tell Us More Live Experience, broadcasting live uh, from Johannesburg, South Africa, Kilani uh, in particular. Today is an interesting day. It's the 12th of August. It'll mark almost five months uh, since South Africa went into a lockdown. It's been a minute since we heard from my El Presidito. Rumors circulating around that there's going to be some new announcements regarding the sale of cigarettes, uh, rather tobacco products and alcohol. I don't know. The healthcare workers and uh, healthcare providers weren't too uh, happy about that first unbanning. So we'll see what happens and transpires over the last couple of weeks. It has been kind of quiet, not too much information coming out of uh, state resources, but we'll see what happens over the next coming weeks. But talking about uh, states, um, the United States is uh, gearing up towards its next presidential race. And recently, the, the, the honorary Joe Biden, who was uh, Barack Obama's vice president, announced his running mate for these upcoming uh, elections. The one and only Kamala Harris, who is a senator in uh, California, uh, she will be uh, his uh, running mate uh, uh, in, in the position of vice president, should he win. Um, she's got a stellar career, incredible accomplishments, becoming the first black woman to be involved in the um, kind of presidential uh, race. So we're hoping that this uh, is kind of mark some kind of a change in American politics. But we do know that the American kind of political landscape is quite messy. Um, you know, there's a lot of bizarre stuff that happened. There was tampering in the last elections, according to people saying that Russia was involved. Um, but but it's, it's, it's hopefully a sign of what's to come. Joe Biden himself uh, is running against President Trump. But I think on a larger scale, it's bizarre that there's so many old people who are running to be leaders of the state. I think there's a major disconnect between populations of certain countries and their leaders. It just seems old, like old people uh, are there telling us what to do. It's like our parents are running the country, which is mad bizarre. Uh, but we'll see what happens in that regard. The next thing that's been interesting this week, Cardi B, Megan Lee Stallion, probably the most uh, popping artist of the last few years, released a new rhythm called WAP. Uh, old school heads might know it as wireless application protocol. <laughs> that's the thing you used to use on your cell phone to get ringtones. It was like a form of data. Um, but yeah, man, the, the song has got some rather explicit lyrics, uh, some very suggestive stuff going on in the music video. As far as I'm concerned, I think the track is fire. I think the rhythm is dope. Uh, Cardi B, Meg Thee Stallion got some nice flows there, got some bars. Um, but, you know, conservatives have come out and have spoken about wanting to ban the song, which I think is ridiculous. I think we're living in a weird society where people are not ready for kind of sexually liberated woman and i think that's bizarre i think people can make what they want to make um and there's an audience for it who are going to consume it in fact cardi b was actually talking recently on apple beats saying that people are always telling her to make conscious rap but there when you look at the spotify numbers nobody is consuming the conscious rap instead she's doing big numbers so uh, it kind of says a little bit about our culture like what we're willing to uh, celebrate in the open uh, as opposed to what we celebrate behind closed doors. But shout out to them. They make a fire rhythm. Uh, Megan Lee Stallion's back kicking ass. Of course, she had the joint with um, uh, Beyonce Knowles, which was doing mad numbers. Uh, so shout out to her. Hopefully, she's doing well after that bizarre incident with Tory Lanez. Um, you know, it's interesting because people want to police kind of what women are going through. And in South Africa, it's Women's Month. But some of the shit that's been happening here has been a bit of a farce. It's been a little bit tone deaf. This weekend, they had an all-woman roadblock across the nation. And it was like, guys, I think I think you're missing the point. This is not how we celebrate uh, our women, particularly in the law enforcement uh, sector of our society. I don't think that's a very helpful way of celebrating them or showing them love. So I'm interested 
with you guys, what do you think about all of our kind of uh, Women's Day celebrations in South Africa, how we celebrate and commemorate the women in our country versus what we're actually doing? Because that's the real issue, right? What we're saying and what we're doing are two very different things. Um, let us know what your thoughts are and what's going on. But without getting too political, you know, this is a show where we try to mix it up. Some serious stuff and then some laid back conversations with some incredible people who are doing dope things. And I'm really excited for today's guest who I got to work with uh, a few years ago in a really fun kind of show that was different for me and I think different for both of us and a lot of people who are involved. But I'm excited to bring on our next guest, incredible, incredible person. Uh, so without further ado, please welcome to the show, the one and only Manta Pout. Beep, 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 beep. I, Hello. I'm literally looking at myself and I'm like, are you really doing this to the people? Are you going <laughs> just there like this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You look great, man. What are you talking about? You have to say that, Mo. You have to say that. But I know people that come on the show look really nice. I've watched. Do you think I'm a joke? No, no. Look, at look. if it means anything, my hairline is coming back in, you know, in layer well, way. Anything, Mojack, you have a <laughs> ring light. I can tell. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> it's I the first time. <laughs> thank you so I'm much not, for having me. Thank you, man. I'm so excited to chat to you. I've been trying to get like a lot of kind of uh, alumni on this show. We used to work on MTV based newsish, which is where I think I'd maybe met you on YFM prior to that. But yeah. newsish was a super fun experience. It was my first time presenting. What was that show like for you, like being involved in that? It was, I think it was my first time presenting as well. Mm. Um, not like a guest presenter, but like being on a show where I am the presenter. So it was, it was a very nice experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're right. We did meet at Y a couple of years before that. And so we, oh, we had our first experience on TV together, Mo. Right? Right? It was, it was so different. It was like a world I wasn't used to. Pop culture is not really my world. Yeah. Um, but it was a super dope experience, that cast and crew. What did you kind of learn from it? Because I was just learning on the fly, like trying to figure out what's going on here. Yo, what did I learn? <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you know some things you're not learning. You're really just doing it and waking up and doing it. <laughs> I, I genuinely think that was like the most challenging time of my career. Like, because after mm. that, everything changed. Like when I was on sure. MTV, I was on YFM, I was working behind the scenes at Red Pepper. Mm. Uh, but I think it was at the end of 2015, I sure. made a conscious decision to leave it all, like leave all three jobs. Wow. Um, so it, was, it was a great experience, but it was the most, I need to grow up time in my life. Like I've had fun in the industry. I've had so much fun. And I, I think luckily our jobs are fun, isn't it? Sure. So, I'm a <laughs> right but i but also i was having a very hard time with the reality of growing up and and being respected as well in the industry and in what i do mm. and not the the fun girl that's doing everything and like yeah working on that show and that show and that show i felt like the 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 wheels were almost like almost getting out of control for me because i felt sure. like I was control my time um, I was on, on the show. I used to work in the evenings, but I was on that mm. show very early in the morning. We had to be yeah. shooting at 9 a.m., but I had a radio show in the evening, and during the day I was a red pepper. So I felt like I wasn't sleeping. I was mm. waking up, and I was out of the house from like half past seven, eight, and coming back after 10. So so it was – so everything got to me, obviously, and I was like, I'm done with everything. Stop. <laughs> I'm out of peace. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, that's kind of an incredibly um, mature decision to make because a lot of people would think to themselves, yo, I'm on all these platforms. I cannot let this opportunity go. Yeah. What kind of, what is your saving grace? Did you know there was something at the end of the road or you just kind of believed in your own journey? I genuinely didn't. I, I'd be lying mm. on it if I said I knew. I think I just felt overwhelmed, right? I've always, mm. I've always really controlled my time because I've always really just done radio. Sure. Um, and some gigs on weekends if I'm emceeing a voiceover every now and then. So I felt like in that time, I really was not fully involved in controlling how everything was running in my life. Mm. Um, 
I had a manager who wasn't basically managing me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was happens, I was missing yeah. meetings, I was missing things because I just felt like, but I just did this. That should be the last thing of the day, you know. Like I, I felt oh. like I was doing a lot of things. Um, so yeah, I I quit all my three jobs. It was why fame, Ray Pepper, and MTV. It was fun. It was great, and I know that people glorify having a lot of jobs and having a lot of gigs. At the time, mm. I don't think I was mature enough to handle having more than one job. It felt overwhelming for me. I feel you. I mean, I think there is that the kind of that burnout that can happen. Yeah. Or you just like you don't take care of your mental health, so there is a danger, I think, to wanting to be everywhere at the same time. Yeah, you know, exactly. Um, for me, like you spoke about YFM, that that station is very significant for me and my family. And um, we knew Dirk Hartford, who's one of the people that started it, and and it was this pipeline of talent. What was it yeah. like being a part of Y and, and kind of this generation and this crop of talent? Man, I always say this: like YFM is like. The baptism of fire of radio like <laughs> <laughs> there's like no hiding right like everyone sure. it's the one place where you are it's the only station in south africa um mm. on a commercial level where you are given the space to find your voice while you work you you, you know like find yourself yeah. pal that's your pain <laughs> maybe this is not it. maybe you're this type of girl and they really help you grow your your brand or the kind of radio that you want to do Mm. So why think for me, I always say this, if if you want to be on radio, it's the best place to start. You yeah. really move out of there to other places, sure of the radio that you want to do. Um, it, it felt like it was tried and tested for me. I had done two years on, on lunchtime and I had done two years on breakfast. So wow. I felt like I had done the shows when I went to FM, I really wanted to do lunchtime. It was the first show we did. Mm. And getting breakfast was like this is better than i even uh, expected so it was a very dope experience it was a fun experience we partied like crazy it's as fun <laughs> as it sounds genuinely all the time <laughs> what? so i love that experience I, I grew from there and i will never ever ever even downplay the the impact it's had in my career i think it's an institution a lot of people have come through you know when you talk about the unatis and the, the dj freshes and the yeah. bad boy T lees and I think that's undisputable. What, what do you think of like, I think a lot of young people don't get that opportunity. Do you yeah. think there are spaces in entertainment where you're allowed to learn and fail, but also in high pressure situations where the show counts, you know, morning yeah. radio counts, afternoon counts. The reality is that it's like, you know, like I like in YFM to like a, like, you know how Disney club or was a club Disney with, the people that are now like the superstars and the Justin Timberlakes and the Britneys. It was and like the Christina's, the yeah. Where they started and <laughs> learned and grew and were taught how to be stars, right? Sure. Um, and and YFM for me in entertainment in South Africa is that. It truly is that. Um, but at the end of the day, even at Disney Club, there's there's deliverables, there's work mm. that has to be done. Mm. Doing mm. morning morning radio, you've got tons of clients that you need to impress. Um, so it, it's all fun, but it's so much more work, um, that it's, it's almost dangerous to mix it up with anything else. If you want to do pure, perfect radio. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I've never thought of that yeah. idea of kind of having a singular focus. Yeah. For me, it, radio is always until I'm comfortable enough. It's the place to focus first because yeah. you're working with people's money and it's a lot of money and. I feel like once clients lose confidence in you and once listeners lose confidence in you and once the station loses confidence in you, then why are you still mm. on air? So it's it's the one thing that I feel like if you do get an opportunity to get onto radio as a young person, you really yeah. need to hold on to it with both your hands and take care of it because radio is a very rewarding career in our country. It can take care of sure. you forever. Mm. You know, so you need to take care of it for it to take care of you. I need I, to be... Yeah so good at taking care of my craft that I can never be out of a job. It's just that simple. You get hired because you're professional in radio, not because you're mm. funny. Funny guys yes. don't laugh. Cool <laughs> chick don't laugh. You have to be I'll professional, you unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You have to be funny, but you have to be very professional. <laughs> it's very demanding. It sounds fun. I, I worked at an um, online radio station. I won't say the name. Yeah. And, like, I would go in on weekends and then the people would be like, did you prep? I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean prep? 
<laughs> like, just put on the mic, dog. Yeah. Then the producer would be like, hear the stories we're talking about. Then I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean you know what you're going to talk about? Then this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, was, I mean, so you talk about this radio, this baptism of fire. I think what's interesting about you is you're constantly evolving. You're doing different things. Um, you're currently at 94.7. And there's this other element, kind of the live aspect. First yeah. of all, are you missing being out on live stages? And how is that different from kind of like the radio studio controlled environment? Definitely. I think the 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 I miss being on stage because I did theater all my life, right? And a lot of people oh, know really? that. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I did theater all my life. I did children's theater growing up. I did mm. children's theater as a grown up for children. Um, I did, I was on the UJ drama company all throughout my wow. varsity career. Um, that's the live aspect. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking, but that's what I miss. Sure, sure. It's all part of it, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely miss that because it's the thrill of, the, I'm, I'm a people's pleaser, okay? I want to see people <laughs> know what I'm doing. <laughs> so any, anything that's live, radio being live, seeing what mm. people think of what you're doing in the moment gives me that thrill. I, I like people pleasing. Yes. I, it also so, feels yeah, like... I, yeah? Sorry, it just feels like you're also like a little bit of danger. As you as you take us through, it feels like, like you you're know, like danger too. It's like I might not get this line, but will I? <laughs> so you've kind of missed that being in front of people and 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 like i because you guys used to have the um, the kind of family day concerts right yeah so are, um yeah Huawei joburg day mm. yeah so Huawei joburg day is pretty dope it's a concert it's the biggest concert in in joburg um it mm. happens twice a year it's 947 and Huawei. um so around may we have the family day one and sure. around September is one where there's no under 18s and it's just like uh, everyone having fun. Um, so those obviously with COVID happening, very mm. much impacted because we couldn't have both of them. Sure. Um, so yeah, a lot of things are impacted at 947 because everyone knows that Prime Media and 947 as a whole always has something that has to do with being out in the city. We always yeah. you're cycling or you're running or there's a concert or, you know, mm. So the live aspect of things coming to life from radio is very much yeah. affected because that's basically how 947 keeps alive. It's always sure. in the streets of Joburg doing something. Yeah. True. I think you guys always had a presence. You weren't just like this thing we saw from afar. You were constantly yeah. involved in like communities and stuff. I think what's interesting for me, like what have you, what's this experience been like? I call it the new abnormal of kind yeah. of, working with these new protocols? What's it been like still doing radio on a regular basis on, on such a dope show and, and still working in the midst of what's going on? You know, I was saying, and, and I think if you follow me on social media, anyone, you know how I always talk about living alone. For me, it's mm. like the pit. I hate it. I'm over it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm over it. Um, but I think working has been the one thing that really has kept me sane. And we know with COVID, mm. even if you live with people, the emotions and the anxiety is up and down, right? Because uh, sure. finances are affected. Things have had to stop or take a back seat because you can't do everything right now. Um, you yeah. can't overcommit yourself in things. So I think work has been the one thing that's really kept me sane. Um, because also we've gone to work every day. So at least I've seen the team every day. So I've had sure. human interaction, even though I live alone. Yeah. At least every day, Monday to Friday, I've got human interaction. I see people. We laugh. We have fun. We we pr post uh, production after the show. Get home mm. around eight or just before eight, you know. And just you have people at least. My only thing, Mojack, is not yeah. even a cover yeah. thing. Is yeah. that when you go alone, you're quiet from when you get home until you get to work tomorrow. <laughs> is it? So that's always the bad thing. The fact that I get home at half past seven and I'll talk again tomorrow at two. <laughs> you kind of have to save all your words and keep them inside. Do you are you doing like voice um like video calls to keep up with people because that's been helping me stay sane. At first, at the beginning of covid, I was doing it so much and my friends were like, "Briga bova, we can't. <laughs> we can't do this all the time. We love with people." You know, at first I was doing it. I'm just binging a lot of television. Oh my god. Oh, snap. What's yeah, on so your what's, what's on your watch list? Sorry, before I 
TV's kept me sane. I've I've rewatched all seasons of Survivor from season one to forty. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm rewatching Master Chef America. I'm on season seven. I start tonight, season seven. Damn. I've re I'm rewatching The Office as well, US. Yeah. Um, what am I rewatching? I'm starting Breaking Bad next week, so I've got a a list of shows that I need to rewatch. I'm a serial rewatcher, by the way. I've got anxiety when I have to start a new show. I don't know what that's called, but I rewatch. I mean, you, you know, you're not the first person that said this. Everyone's kind of um, there's this idea that we're rewatching stuff because we're certain of the outcome of that that program. Mm. Like we know exactly what's going to happen. That makes we're like, sense. Okay, yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's basically what I'm what I'm what I'm doing. Work and television have kept me sane and cooking. I've been cooking quite a lot. Um, as you can see, it shows in my face. <laughs> I mean, I, I wanted to chat to you about that because I've started cooking a lot more. My plating is trash, Yo, my plating is killing me, yo. It's like every plate looks like Rigo Society and somebody like dished up like on Troyang, who's just like, it's like it, it just feels like an upset aunt dished up for me every time. You, know? you need to watch more cooking shows. You watch food shows. I love them so much. Like, Jamie Oliver has kept me sane. No, I can't watch Jamie. I watch him every now and then, but Jamie's messy, so I can't... I don't like messy cooks. I love Gordon Ramsay because he's clean. Oh, maybe that's what's happening. That everything... Maybe that's what you're playing, you're playing Mojack. And you're <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I love cooking. I've been doing a lot of that. And the trick to plating is if you have mm. a grain or a puree or whatever, it's at the bottom, you have protein on top of that and a salad on top. Or on the side. That's that can't be the whole thing. No way. Is that that sounds like but a weird thing? Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if you have those elements, that's how you plate them. Oh I me, mean, I've been like I'm always like protein left, veg right. <laughs> Can your food not have a, a conglomeration on the plate? I'm like, Can it look nice? It's a pile. Pile <laughs> <laughs> it up. It looks nice all the time. So you've been have you I mean, so cooking has been my new thing that I've kind of tried to be active in. It, I think it, it helps me reconnect with people I love. Like there's something about food that reminds me of people I love. Um, besides cooking, what kind, of, what kind of other stuff have you been doing that's maybe reminded you of a different time or a different vibe that you can think of? Um, what else have I been doing apart from cooking and television? There's nothing, if yeah, that's the list, it's fine too. Yeah, I think food is the main thing that like, when I think of my family, I think food, like we've always been a food centered people. Mm. Um, I want to re, uh, my mom's late, you know that. I want to mm -hmm. I want to try to, she used to make us chocolate and caramel cakes. Wow. Um, when we were kids, like every yeah. birthday was literally chocolate and caramel. <laughs> um, but it's so crazy, isn't it? When you lose someone, Whatever you associated with them is so much better. And it's like, it's yeah. the experience that I have with chocolate cake now is so much more different. Yo, I made a stew in the lockdown, right? And it had yeah. like, it had um, like a cauliflower or broccoli that reminded me of my, my, my father also passed on, but it yes. reminded me of this, this poiki he used to make. And right? so every time I ate it, I was like, oh, my nigga. Like, but like the experience was different. You had it when he was around and it wasn't, you know, yeah, so I'm, it just I'm finding I'm finding those those things as well. I'm I'm the small things that just remind me of like late family members that I mm. I try. I think as you grow up, we have a very strange maybe we don't have an idea of what death is is or sure. what it means. But I think mm. once you really like understand that this person is gone, you kind mm. of find Ways to hold on to what reminds you of them sure. and what brings some sense of normalcy if they were around. So that's what I'm saying. You hold on to food that reminds you of them. You hold on to clothing, a shirt, you know, yeah. that you wear on Sunday or a Saturday, whatever, that will take you closer to that memory of that person. And, sure. and I've been finding that that's what I'm doing a lot of. My aunt loved cooking, but my mom loved baking and they both late. So that's what oh, I'm yeah. doing. That's what makes me feel closer to them. I think that's a dope way of kind of reconnecting with those present and those past is, yeah. you know, kind of merging these two worlds of, of like, I'm really, I like the, 
it's a pity we can't have people over, but that social aspect of cooking for people and bringing them together is something that I'm really missing. But, yeah. you know, the, the world is where it's at at the moment. We're doing what we all can to cope. Yeah. Um, music's a big one. I know, you, of course, you work in radio. Music's a big thing. What, what kind yeah. of, like, are your go-to things when you're feeling down? I find Amy Winehouse pops up in my life a lot when I'm in a weird kind of state. Amy, Amy is always like right there, right? Um, yeah. I listen to a lot of, with music. My mom and I absolutely loved Whitney Houston. So I listen to a lot. I've been listening to Whitney like every single week. Sure, um, sure. And I'm finding songs that I've always known that are sounding better that are Whitney's because you know you have a memory now attached to it and you're like, look, this is finally happening. That's um, fire. So, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, music, I listen to a lot of Whitney Houston. I listen to Amy Winehouse as well. Um, I listen to Tandy Somerzai locally quite a lot. I love her music. Dope, yeah. Um, I love Shakana. I think she's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I, so I listen to a lot of pop yeah. music. Sure. I, I wanted to tell you this random story. You know, at Newsish, the only person who ever made me nervous was Shakana. <laughs> really in the three years i've never done i've never fluffed so many takes because of someone <laughs> i swear to god never i literally i was a two take person max i yes. did like 11 when she was there almost gonna punch the director like i was so married <laughs> i was like i was red that day i was like you sort of guys so guys, this generally doesn't happen, guys. You that is I, um, so it was bad, man. It was bad. Like, have you ever been starstruck? Is there anyone you've ever met where you just like you just kept fumbling and saying the wrong shit in front of them? Definitely. I think I'm just able to save myself when I say the wrong thing. <laughs> when I say further wrong things, I mean <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just the wrong thing, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Um <laughs> but I think when when we interviewed Steve Harvey on the show, yeah, I've never been so starstruck in my life. Mm, mm, mm. And and I've interviewed pretty big names. I've interviewed Mariah Carey, darling. Sure, yeah, yeah. But I think the Steve Harvey interview that we had on the show mm. was the most out of body experience experience for me. Tell us more. Um, I think it's because. You don't realize how much you've consumed a Steve Harvey, right? All your life. Oh. Like he's become part of everything you've watched. Mm. And you've listened to him. I've listened to him on his radio shows online. Sure. And I've watched almost every single TV show he's had. And you don't realize how much you've consumed it. That when when he came into studio, I thought I probably saw this guy more than I I saw my dad. <laughs> Obviously, I grew up probably more than cool. my dad. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I saw this man more than I saw a lot of people in my life because I consume so much of him. And you realize also how much of a fan you are of their work. Mm. And how every time people interview people and they're like, I'm such a big fan of your work, I'm always like, fan Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. That. Interesting. <laughs> but I said it that day and I was like, Flip, I actually mean it. And I hope you realize I actually love your work and I've followed it all my career. And I think that was the one interview where i felt like geez guys i couldn't even ask him a question like fresh was asking all the questions and i was like really yeah <laughs> sitting right next to me steve harvey what the hell do you mean i'm gonna ask him a question Who the fuck am i that's crazy <laughs> yeah so that that's the interview for me it's so it's so weird because like i mean i hate i hate this kind of next question but because you know with comedy they always ask us what's your worst gig and i'm always just like come on guys there's other shit to talk about yeah. but you just reminded me of my worst interview ever i'm gonna tell you and then maybe if you've got one i once you know like um viacom will have these press junkets where they fly you out to meet like people who star in movies and i once went to la for a movie called blockers which had um john cena and i, I forget the leslie man and someone else and it was the worst interview i'd ever conducted in my life leslie man had tooth um had a uh, uh, lipstick on her teeth. I asked John Cena, he had been to South Africa, and he was like, yeah, we wrestle there all the time. 
I asked, like, it was just, like, so bad. And I was talking. <laughs> and then behind the camera, right, there's a person who does this and goes two minutes. Then they go one minute. And so every time I saw them, I was like, okay, shop, 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 shop. And, like, I just lost my train of thought. And it was, I don't know, I, can you think of a, just, like, an interview that just caught you off guard? I mean, I know the Steve one feels different because that was one of, like, you enjoying his work. But yeah. this one, for me, everything was just falling apart by the minute, yo. Yeah, to be honest, I can't think of one at the moment where, where mm. I felt like I was out of control, like uh, everything was falling apart. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're describing now so painful. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I... Yeah, it was just like a, a horror show. Um, but look, I think the, the thing we both know from doing this long enough is that you're going to encounter kind of failures but yeah. I think what's interesting for me is people who are new to the industry, what, what's the kind of least spoken bit of advice or things you would say to people who want to be in entertainment, who, who maybe don't hear about those pitfalls and those struggles that maybe occur uh, once in a while? What would you say to them? Go to school. There's no money here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be hey, honest- thank you guys for tuning in. It's been <laughs> now. <laughs> you know, like for me, right? I always feel like yeah. that is the one thing. Unfortunately, we're in an industry that shows people an altered reality of what the reality of the, the show, the whole show business is, right? Yes, yes. And I've always been very open about how, look, this, I wish this had more money. I studied psychology. Flip, should I maybe just go yeah. to my private dad and just go be a psychologist <laughs> and just make sure. a bit more money? Um. This is love. This is when you come into this industry. I promise mm. you, money will be at the forefront of your reasons um, to join this industry because the money comes so late. Yeah, the I money mean, comes so late. That's um. So you just made me think of like even with stand up, like you spend years like in obscurity and then it yeah. starts stabilizing. You know. Yeah, you spend years spending your money to to remain at the seat you know to be at the right events and mm. speak to the right people to invite you to the right places be seen with the right people for some people to, you know like luckily i've had sure. friends that i've had since varsity and we're all in the same industry yeah, but yeah. it's it's a it's a fulfilling industry in a sense that it's passion and nothing can beat being passionate about something mm -hmm. you'll sleep with less money but with a fuller heart and a bigger heart that's the reality of it unless you do 10,000 jobs, which is something that I'm unable to do. I just, my sure. anxiety doesn't go well with working too many jobs. Um, and maybe collaborating with the right brands and getting the right gigs um, mm. and, 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 and partnerships. But to be honest, it's, it's, a, it's a business that should get you to what else can you do? Ah, interesting. It's it's almost a stepping stone. I think you've yeah. just raised an interesting point because I think I'm starting to see stand up like that because it has already opened so yeah. many doors. But everything is an opportunity for something else, basically. Our industry really is the biggest stepping stone to what else you. It's long to get to finally asking that question, but once you get there, you really mm. can achieve so many more things. Um, so the patience is in starting and it's in getting in and. And working and re remembering that it, you also, if you coming in, are not on the same level as someone else that's been doing this. Because sure. success is also not made overnight. Genuinely, it's thousands of nights that have mm. taken people to get to their first show on stage. You know, comedy, doing comedy, doing their first yeah. radio show on a commercial station. I did campus radio for four years. I did YFM for four years. It took me Damn. eight years to get to 947, which was the dream. Eight years. Damn. That's and that's like that requires a kind of a lot of patience, a lot of fortitude and self belief in yourself because that just exactly. doesn't happen over, like you said. You you need the, and I tell my siblings this. I've got three siblings that are all mm. just just jumping into this industry. It's the saddest thing. For me. <laughs> <laughs> my you brother like, oh, like, nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. You know, so I, I even tell my siblings. My sister is an editor for TV mm. um, shows. My brother sure. is a sound engineer and DJ. My younger brother wants to do sound engineering as well. And I tell mm. him the truth is you will enjoy what you're doing and you will love it. 
but sure. it won't, you won't be at the level that you see the person that you admire. You won't mm. be at the level next year. You will not. It took them mm. so long. And that's the reality. And I think that's the truth that people that want to get into this industry should be told that it's, it doesn't happen overnight. It really takes so long and it takes dedication and it takes doing it over and over again. It's like an sure. egg. When you try an egg, what do you do? Yeah. You hear all oh, my happy things. And, you know, it's, you can see now, it's more happy. <laughs> Just. When you're about to fry an egg, you crack an egg and you hit it over and over again until it cracks. It's that. Mm. You do I it over and over again until you get it right. I think that's interesting. Like there is this distortion of what the 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 thing really is. And I don't think just in entertainment, I think if we yeah. talk about politics and sports, I think people aren't having honest conversations about what those uh industries entail. But you you just mentioned now studying psychology. Like what? Because I did quantity surveying. You and I, it seems like we were just on very different paths. You were what, shocking me when you were at MTV with your quantity surveying. It was giving me such TVs and anxiety. I was like, this guy and numbers. <laughs> it was my jam. You know? why, why did you study psych? What inspired that? It's not deep, hey? My aunt, my uncle married a psychologist, though his wife was a psychologist. <laughs> 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 And I genuinely liked her. She dressed yeah. well, she drove a nice car. Her house was beautiful. And mm-hmm. I was like, the only way to get to this life. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely, it wasn't that deep. Um, I was hell bent all my schooling years um, yeah. on like anything that's got to do with mathematics because I was really good at math. Mm. Um, and anything that maybe then had to do with biology. But beyond that, I wasn't sure. I wasn't clear on what I wanted to do until literally I was in matric and I was like, <laughs> what the hell? I need to do something. <laughs> you know, so I just, one weekend at my grand's and so I was like, hey, auntie. Hmm. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's I, all like, yeah, so Karen. Psychology. It's. I think you and I kind of went to Vasi at the similar times. I'm. I. I mean, I don't want to give away. You don't have to say when you went, but I. My first year was 06. Mine was 07. So okay, you did you go yeah. to UJ? Yes. Okay. Now this is what I remember about going to Vits, right? Yeah. If you wanted to get lit during the day, there was UJ. a place at UJ called the Student yeah. Centrum that oh. used to sell. OBS at nine in the morning, and we used to get lit on your lawns. OBS were five rand, mate. What? Five? Was it really that cheap back then? Well, five rand for a beer at Student Center, and you could chill on the lawns <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your day and fail. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. My first two years, okay, I got through them, and then things tumbled. What do you remember <laughs> the most fondly about the university experience? Hey, what do you remember most fondly about being at uni? Because that was, those were crazy years, yo. Jeez, dude, you know what? I honestly, what I remember the most about Boston, and what I, what I really am glad I went for, yeah, was how I was adamant to start my radio career in first year when I found out there was UJ fame. Because I found out oh, wow. when I was at, at UJ, and mm. I remember I was missing my my communications um, assignment, and I saw UJ sure. fame with the new talents. I was like, what? My fondest memory of this was how at 18, I genuinely yeah. took control of my life. And I was like, I'm going to do radio. And I sat my parents down. I'm like, trust, you're getting the degree. Sure. But I'm doing this radio thing. I think I want to do it. And I did. I joined drama. I did radio. And I was doing all those things. But I remember mm. being so, I, I wasn't going out when I was in varsity. I never, I wasn't sure. even drinking. Can I tell you when I was in varsity? Really? Yeah. Um, so hell bent on when I leave UJFM, I need to get a job. I need a station to call me, or I need to call wow. someone and they need to say, Oh, this girl is from UJFM, you know. So sure. I my my I didn't have as much fun as other people. And I always say to my friends, what time do that? If we could go back to that, I'd probably have more fun. I'd go to Stones, I'd go hang out in Marvel, I'll I'd do yeah. all of that. I didn't do it. Every Friday, my parents picked me up from my apartment and I went home. And all I wanted to do was just get on radio. So I was consuming a lot of radio from first year. I was sleeping sure. with my radio on and I was waking up with my radio on and I was sleeping with my radio wow. on. Um, and I, I was practicing radio links. I was listening. I remember Tully B used to do midnight 
till mm. 3 a.m. or five p.m. at the time. Um, also, Trevor Noah at some point. I used to listen to so many of those shows, and I'd, yes, I'd yes, listen. Yes. To, nah, I would have said it like this, and I practiced the language. <laughs> so I, I look back and I'm like, I might have gotten a lot of things very late. I was a late bloomer, but the one thing I'm glad I grasped or grasped rather at 18, mm. the direction of my career. That's the only thing sure. that I'm pretty proud of, right? Yeah. I'm, I mean, that's an incredible thing to have that clear focus to know what you want. Because I think a lot of people, you know, we speak about Vasti. I didn't know what I wanted at 18. Even yeah. the degree was just like, uh, give me that one. So yeah. like, I'm, I'm really jealous of that kind of really clear vision that you had. But you see, it, it's not like it was that clear when I went in because I didn't even know what psychology uh, had. I was reading <laughs> big books. I just like sociology as well. And I just sure. came in as a numbers person that did well at physical science and mathematics. And now I had to study essays. Oh, so wow. my only thing that was going to keep me sane was doing mm. radio. And I think when I found it, I always say, Varsity might not be for you to get out with that degree. For sure. me, Varsity was coming out with radio. Mm. I think like that's interesting for this idea of that. It's not just purely about the academic experience. I think we forget a lot about kind of learning to socialize. You know, like yeah. I went to Northcliffe High School and then I got to Vith and it was just, it was weird because yeah. it was like this lily white school. And then I was like, oh man, finally I'm with more black people. Oh shit! <laughs> be, be, be. My people. Well, like, you know, yeah, I was like, Fair, hey, chief. Okay, we chief. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can go with this. This is fire. Um, but it's 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 dope to kind of have that vision and that clear focus. And you, and you've been in radio for a long time. And and this next question is kind of interesting for me. The song WAP just came out, right? Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, Ooh. and. People are talking about it, and some people are saying it's vulgar. Some people are saying it's sexually liberating. What I'm quite interested by is somebody on radio, do you have a responsibility for kind of like the stuff you put out there? Do you think of that, or are you just like, yo, this rhythm is banging, let's go. Dope music, that's what I'm about. Um, obviously, if it, if it fits the license that your station has with Ikasa, mm -hmm. then you'll play it, right? Mm. Uh, if it plays at nine four seven, it probably plays at night, like around this time or later. Sure. Um, you do have some responsibility. Uh, well, fortunately and unfortunately, mm. um, because at the end of the, we are very family oriented radio station. Sure, sure. Um, you can't be too wild with your music because there's <laughs> literally lots of kids listening to our show. <laughs> you know? But it will play on our show in the evening with Zueli because. Mm. Why is your child listening at 9 p.m.? So now it's not the station's responsibility because how are you parenting? For sure. <laughs> you know? So, so yeah, um, um, I saw the I saw the video. Oh, my God. It's so hot. It's lit. I love it. <laughs> it's lit. I like it. I, and I only saw it today, and people were, like, criticizing it from last week. It was trending. I think it dropped on Friday or something. Mm -hmm. Very and recent. I don't know, man. I don't know what, what's shocking people. Hip-hop has always been explicit. Is it because it's women? Hip-hop, you yeah. know, like, we've seen naked women in hip-hop videos. Is it because it's them that are telling the story and they're not just video vixens? That's an interesting kind of idea. Like, it's now that people are being vocal and owning their own thing that people are upset. Because you're right. Girls have been more naked in yeah. hip-hop videos when songs are male songs and no one mm. said anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Those nineties videos were fucking hectic, man. People were just having champagne poured on them, were doing wild shit. Exactly. People were in baths of milk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's not that deep, guys. We this, this is actually years later than it should have been. Lil Kim was more explicit. You're right, Foxy Brown, yo. Foxy Brown. Why yo. are people acting like they've never seen women like this? Yeah. It's completely Look, bizarre. What's her name? Nicki Minaj. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think females in hip hop have been quiet. I think people just want to police women and, and women's voices and women's bodies. And mm. there's no single male I've heard complain about how women look in videos if it's a male song. Yeah. There's so many songs where women are subjectified, objectified rather, well, objectified. And mm. they, and no one says anything. 
here they are saying, actually, we're going to do this in our own way, on our own terms. Yeah. In a very tasteful way. And people are complaining. I don't understand. I think, I man, it speaks broadly speaking, like hip hop is a weird kind of like, I mean, I love hip hop, but I know it can be mad problematic, like in terms yeah. of like gender stuff, like, yo, yeah. first of all, from a language perspective and what people say. But I think there is this, um, I don't think it's a new wave. Like you said, man, there's lots of artists who've been liberated, who've been doing this shit. I think, yep. you know, also people are bored, man. Actually, we mustn't overthink this thing. People are just bored <laughs> and full of shit. Yeah. Like there's, there isn't uh, too much to it. Um, interesting times we're living in. Some cool stuff dropping, uh, first of all, from an art perspective. What, what do you have to say for people who are kind of uh, in their own spaces, who are trying to create, maybe aren't capable of finding their feet in this time? Do you have any mm. advice to like, maybe not necessarily artists themselves, but people in general who may be kind of struggling in these times, we, we like to kind of give mm. people maybe a, a, a tip or two if we have any in our, in our locker. You know, I was saying this to a friend actually about how everyone is creating something during this time, right? And mm, mm. unfortunately, it won't be everyone that hits it right. Sure, sure. Um, unfortunately, it won't be everyone that stretches the creativity far and wide enough to mm. come up with something different. Sure. I think people really like are hard on themselves because they expected, oh, you're too quiet. Your peers or your your colleagues are doing something. Mm. Why are you not doing anything? You mm. don't have to. If it doesn't feel natural. If it doesn't feel organic. If it doesn't feel comfortable. Mm. Um, you only make yourself now a clown. Now we're gonna come out of COVID and say, but what were you doing? <laughs> you know like what I mean. Something like that. You know what I mean. <laughs> If it, if it doesn't come naturally and it doesn't feel like something that that only you can give in the way mm. that you give it, then maybe don't do it. It's fine. Like, fi find other talents that you have. Maybe painting, mm. maybe drawing. I don't know. We don't have to all be online doing something or sure. doing parodies every day. Or Not everyone is creative like that. You know what I mean? Sure. And not everyone is going to come to the party that quickly to replace how they were seen outside mm. of it and how the work that they were putting out and how to now, um, what is it? Diversify. <laughs> no, <laughs> not everyone can diversify. It's hard. Sure. It's tough, huh? You question it over and over again. I imagine even before you started the show, you're probably thinking, oh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not easy. Because sure. also there's an audience that, that's going to receive this. You can't undermine them as well. You either give mm. them quite just don't do it. Mm. I think that's one of the most, I think that's one of the greatest bits of advice we've heard on the show. It's like, it's really liberating to to people who are feeling under pressure. I think that's a big thing. Like there's a yeah. pressure that's coming with this time and you don't no, have no. to kind of do that. You don't, you don't have to. We need to. And I think as black creative, as, an, as, a, as young people that are in the creative space that are black, especially, mm. Mm. we need to, we need to stop chasing something. Sometimes you don't have to chase. It's okay, mm. let this one go. Mm. I don't have to be on every bandwagon. Maybe I can't do this. It's okay. Let me leave it. Sure. Mm. I don't have to chase Shit. everything. Those yeah. are those are bars. That's you <laughs> like it's like this is I we have to end this here, Mansu. We <laughs> literally have to. We the, I'm not gonna take the risk of me fucking this up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking more no, bullshit. Fine. I think <laughs> we really live in a culture of wanting to do more than we should. It's fine. That's fine. I want to first of all thank you so much for joining us. This has been fucking amazing. I love Hello. your work. I miss you a lot. And thank this has been you. fucking great. Thank you so much, Mojak. This was absolutely phenomenal. I've missed you. Tom, man, thank you for joining us. I'm going to chat to you soon, and I'm sending you lots of love to you, your team, and and uh, hope you're doing good in, in this these really bizarre times. Thank you so much, Mojak. More love to you. More love to you. Cook thank some you, more. Watch Gordon Ramsay. Watch yeah? Gordon Ramsay. Okay, okay. Ram I'm going to get new plates, too. I'm going to be fire. In in November, you're not ready, man. You're not ready. <laughs> chat soon, yeah? Hey, that was the incredible Manto Pao joining us. One of my favorite people. I had such a wicked time working with her um, uh, at MTV on a, on a great show called Newsish. I loved working with her in radio when I got the opportunity to be interviewed by her. 
just a phenomenal person who's doing great work. We didn't even get to chat about some of the wonderful stuff she's been doing during this uh, COVID times. Uh, her and some good people have been kind of uh, helping out in various communities. So shout out to Mantua and her team. And again, I, I had so much fun today. And I think for me, the reason I do the show is because I love the company of the people that we've had on the show. They've really given me life. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and the experience. We hope that you guys are doing good wherever you are in the world. We're sending you lots of love. And we want to remind you, I want to remind you, yo, these are bizarre times. We're all experiencing really weird shit. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to kind of have these levels of outputs or, 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 or kind of want to be productive. Do what you need to do. If you got to take care of your mental, do that. You got to take care of your physical health, do that. Do whatever serves you, do whatever empowers you. We want to thank you for tuning in to another episode. We're sending you lots of love. Um, and we can't wait for our next guest. This was so much fun. I enjoyed it. Gems, bars, chats, good times. We're going to learn how to plate and bring you more heat. Tirle Pasha was uh, here once again joining us. A fan favorite. Show me too. Thank you guys who watch the show live. Uh, we try to read your comments when we can. We'll try to do it on the top of the show in the upcoming episodes. To those of you who watch this in posterity or later on, remember to subscribe and to like. Tell a friend. Uh, again, sending you lots of love. Tell us more. We'll be back soon. Peace out. Okay, thanks. Bye.